maybe you could tell us, like, you were talking about your own personal formation. What has Youth 2000 done for you as a person? Um, wow. Um, I, I think in, in some regards, Stephen, it, it's, it, oh, that's a brilliant question. Um, so I discovered Youth 2000 as a lad at university. Um, and at that particular point in my life, I had what I felt were sort of reasonably good priorities. You know, it came from a Catholic family, um, went to Mass every Sunday. Granny was massively, Granny lived with us and was massively into her faith and prayed the rosary and prayed for me. And like it was, she used to light candles when I would do exams. And um, for those of you who have Irish relatives or know Irish or have lived here for a while, it's actually culturally a really big thing to have a relative light a candle for you if you have like a, you know, an exam coming up or you're going to a hospital visit or something. So those things are sort of culturally built in for us. Um, and at that time, I was really into success. Success was like the thing in my life. I wanted to be successful in my school. So I wanted to get really good grades and exams. And I was really into Gaelic football. So I wanted to be, uh, I just wanted to be really successful at that. I wanted to represent my county, which would be the equivalent of, you know, playing in one of the lower divisions I would imagine in like the championship or that if you're big into soccer um I say that because we're not it's not a professional sport um but it was really really important to play underage for my county all those things went to university the attitude never changed it was sort of make your parents proud make yourself proud make your community proud success 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 um I just wasn't happy not like not one bit I knew that uh, the whole thing was a performance um and I know that to be true because like I would work really hard for exams and then I would hold them up and be like, oh, look at how well I did. Or I would, you know, work really hard on the football team so that people would pat me on the back and be like, oh, he's so good. He's in the newspaper again this week or whatever it is. Um, and the parents would be really happy with me. Like I came from two loving parents. I don't know why I was so bent on impressing them because they were never that kind of parents. But it was in me that I had to perform to impress. And the perform thing got a little bit out of control. Um, that I wasn't myself. I was just one person to the boys in the football, one person in the school. When I got to university, um, it was kind of the first time that I had an interest in, well, really in the opposite sex because I had sort of been preoccupied with school and with sport and stuff like that. And then there was this whole new environment of, oh, look, everybody's going drinking. Oh, look, everybody is dating girls and um, going out every night of the week and partying and coming home and, and pretending when you came home at the weekend to be the person you were when you were at school that you were still mm -hmm. the same person doing the same things not letting on that you were having this sort of wild new life at university um and i lived that for a couple of years and i would say i was just really really unhappy um the, the exams didn't make me happy the football didn't make me happy and then at university you know going out partying didn't make me happy having you know girlfriends didn't make me happy at all it was it was just another tech social success thing to to do and that would make you successful um and it was one day i, I was in the, the chaplaincy in belfast and i wasn't in there in the chaplaincy because it was holy or because it was praying they had a restaurant <laughs> and i was in um getting food and amongst other things sort of time passed and i spent a bit of time in there getting food and what have you and i was there one day anyway and this girl came up to me and says would you like to come to a prayer group now, i didn't know it was a youth 2000 prayer group i hadn't heard of anything at the time but to be approached by a young lady i was a wee bit taken back and a bit flattered if i'm being honest um mm -hmm. but i was kind of taken back by her confidence by her boldness to to walk up to not just me but there was a, a line of fellas who were there and she just approached every single person and was like, do you want to come to a prayer group? Do you want to come to a prayer group? Um, and I was a wee bit stunned by this. Who who would do that? Like, this is the 21st century. Who, who you know, advertises a prayer group? Who does that? Um, so I politely said no. And then she was very insistent. I was like, no, but take this card. Like, you know, you should go. You should go. And I was a little bit rude then saying, can you back off? I don't want to go to your prayer group. Um, but whatever happened, I took the card. And six months later, out of sheer curiosity, I went to this prayer group. Now, it was a Youth 2000 prayer group. Um, you know, with my background, I had been to adoration as a kid. And I remember as a kid, adoration was the single most boring thing that you could put a kid through. Um, because my mum used to take my granny and I to adoration after mass sometimes. 
And I didn't know what they were doing. They were just sitting there praying, as I understood it. But praying was just unbelievably boring. Um, but I went into this prayer group anyway. And right enough, that's exactly what they were doing. They were all in adoration, sitting, praying. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be really frank here, Stephen. If anybody's listening and you feel offended by this, I do apologize in advance. But it is it is the, the, the absolute truth. Um, I didn't think that people who did things like this were, were normal. I didn't think that in the 21st century, people who sat on cushions in front of, uh, you know, communion, as I understood it at the time, and later I understood it to be Jesus, I didn't understand and prayed together. I thought those people were a little bit abnormal. Like I always, and I know that's so prejudiced and so biased, but that they wouldn't function in sort of normal society. They came here because they hadn't somewhere else to go. So I didn't talk to anybody and I used to leave half an hour early because I didn't want to talk to anybody. Um, there was an arrogance about me that I thought I was better than these people, that you know, I was being successful in the real world and these people wouldn't. But I kept going back and I kept going back and I kept going back. And I, the reason I went back was because for that half an hour in that prayer group, and it was only a half an hour because I went I left early because it was it was a holy hour, but I left early because I didn't want to talk to anybody. Um, it was the only place in my life I felt at peace. And peace was this other strange thing that I didn't really understand. But it was the only place in my life that I wasn't pretending, that mm. I wasn't performing, you know, being something for someone. When I sat here and I said prayers into myself and stirred at the white thing, the Eucharist, um, it was just, you're just yourself. And that's all you have to be. Just be you, Peter. And you don't need to do a dance or do a handstand or, you know, you just can be yourself here. Um, and that was grand. That went on for a long time, like maybe got to a year until one day I was leaving early. And the lady who had invited me to the prayer group ran down the stairs after me and says, uh, I know you leave every week. I'm, I'm not going to interrupt you or stop you. But I was in Medjugorje and I got you. I thought of you and I got you these. And she handed me a pair of rosary beads. And oh. I remember being so unbelievably stunned. Not, not what I'm stunned by was imagine this absolute stranger who probably doesn't know my second name, like thinking of me when she's on her holidays. Now, I didn't know what Magigori was, I, I, I just thought she was on her holidays somewhere. Um, but it turns out it's a place of pilgrimage, a wonderful place I've been. Um, but I was so stunned at the thoughtfulness of a stranger to remember the dude back at the prayer group in Belfast who leaves early every week because he doesn't talk to anyone and to to chase him down the stairs with a pair of rosary beads. I was like, that's just a level of kindness that I don't see in the rest of my life. I don't see it in other places. So from there, went to a retreat, met up with more people, stayed late at the prayer group, started to talk to these people, realised that they're absolutely professionals in their own right, you know, living very... <laughs> successful lives as, as I was measuring it by um but they were also here because there was this was the source of something for them it was the source of that peace that contentment and that they got this these friendships as well and I would say that that is a long-winded way of saying that's what Youth 2000 did for me is that it gave me that first encounter with Jesus in the Eucharist um now my life didn't change overnight um I still had a lot of mistakes after that. I did a lot of things I shouldn't have after that. But it was when the seed was planted and subsequently watered and grew within me and I started to change, started to become a different person. Uh, that's, a, that's a painful process, man. If anybody's listening and thinking, you know, how do you go from being how you are to being sort of more in love with Jesus? That's a painful process. Like, you have to sort of break old molds in your life. You have to challenge old friendships. You have to challenge old habits. And um, it takes time. It takes effort. But like the Lord is so sustaining. Like he just gives you whatever you need. But you definitely need to ask. You need to ask him. You need to go back to him. You need to spend time with him. Um, and he will give you what you need. Because... I didn't know what I needed. I needed a huge amount of grace, but I was only asking for a little bit. It's funny how Jesus knew that it would be a lot more than I was asking for that I needed. Um, but in a long-winded way, that's what Youth 2000 did for me. It, it was a complete transformation, um, but transformation uh, over a few years. That is uh, a beautiful story. And 
Uh, and, and for me, like I suppose Youth 2000, and particularly Youth 2000 Island, had such a big part in my own story and in bringing me to come to know the Eucharist in a really deep way. Um, 